As a community, we come together because our goal is the same, which is to improve the lives of others. I think what makes our education stand out is that, you know, we don't really represent ourselves or our own taste level when we put education out for the people. We want them to develop as their own style, own flavor. We're interested in helping you be the hairdresser that you are and improve in the way that you'd like to improve. We're just going to provide content and material to help you get there. What's up, everybody? This is Jesse with the art team. Wow, that video makes me seem a lot cooler than I really am. Much thanks to Ryan Giuseppe for putting that together for us. Um, we're here today to talk about long layers or mid to long layers uh, in, a sec in the second uh, segment of our The Show Must Go On. So I've got my office set up here in an undisclosed location in Nashville, Tennessee, and we'll be coming at you live. But hey, listen, you can interact with me as we go through this. Please ask questions. Please keep uh, the material moving forward because, as always, I leave little bits of wiggle room so we can talk. And uh, if you don't say anything to me at all, then I'll just power my way through this. And we'll be in and out of here in a tight 20. We don't want that. So what are we going to be doing today? Uh, we're going to be looking at a just sensible approach to doing mid to long layers on the head form. Um, a sensible sec sectioning breakdown. I can never say those two words together. Uh, that'll just allow us to get to most haircuts. You can see that on the wall back here behind me, foundational breakdown. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. This is a way to break down the head form into its major components, which will allow you to orient yourself and attack your haircuts in a much more organized or a precise way. Um, the haircut we're going to be looking at, nice flowing layers. Uh, for giggles, we're going to do it horizontally just because it'll be a little bit of a departure from the way that we normally do it. So if you're new to the game, here's going to be an interesting way horizontally to attack a long layered cut. If you've been in the game a long time, here's an interesting way to attack mid to long layers in a horizontal way. So it's the same thing for all of us. Just make sure you're here to get what you need. Um, it's a little bit shaggy without being too shaggy. We'll be using horizontal placement, which will give us a little bit more of a weighted feel. Those horizontal layers will build up against each other, whereas uh, vertical layers tend to have a collapsing point somewhere, especially if the round of the head is inside that section. So let's go to this first. Before we get totally started, just a few quick uh, announcements to get us set off right. Um, we have a lot going on here today. We're gonna be giving some stuff away to you. If you stick around for the whole thing, be on the lookout for your opportunity to text that in to win. Winner will be chosen randomly after the show and announced then. Um, Today on samvia.com, we're doing 40% off our site store wide, but the real kicker here is that 10% of all sales we will be giving to PBA's uh, COVID-19 relief fund. So just know that we'll be doing our bit to help out with that. Uh, financing is available for our equipment as well, so make sure you have a look. Pivotpoint.com, our partners here, who give us these amazing mannequins. Here's Lydia coming up over the banner there for you. Uh, she is our mannequin, Sam Via's education mannequin. 14-inch uniform length gives us the ability to do lots of haircutting stuff, long hair styling, whatever you want to get into. This baby's here, ready to train with you. So let's get started. You can see I've done a little bit of pre-sectioning here. Let me just drop her down one more time as we look at foundational breakdown here. What this does for us is give us a logical way to attack the head form. Um, sectioning along some familiar places, as you can see, we work along what we call the vertical transition, sometimes called the parietal ridge that carries us through into the crown on both sides. Um, vertical transition to us makes a little bit more sense because as we move up the head form, there is gonna be a transitional point where it is no longer the side of the head, it's becoming the top. And there is definitely a place that lets us know where that is. The next bit of sectioning that we did to get us into our foundational breakdown is just to work our way to what we call a horizontal transition here, sometimes called the corner backs. Here's how we find those. Just kind of take a comb flat, take your hand flat as you can get it, or another comb if you like, and lay that against the side of the head. So one against the center back, one against the apex of the side of the head, usually found around top of the ear. And that's going to give us this little corner right there. When we bisect that area, there gives us a point of reference at the corner. Or as a horizontal transition, as we come around the side of the head, there is definitely a place where it changes direction and becomes the back. So we left with the sides 
the back and the top and the crown. What's great about sectioning is that it allows us to split a very large section of hair into subsections, which allows us to be more organized in our approach. It lets us, if you're a nervous guy like me, lets you calm down and you have just a little bit of hair at a time to work with, so don't freak out. And uh, that's the way that I feel. So sectioning for me is a calming exercise that allows me to get to a place where we're ready to do something. So we're gonna take our first section here in the back and begin to cut our perimeter. So we're gonna be cutting this for texture, um, looking with some different ways to hold the shear, some different ways to attack a really common movement called point cutting. Now here in my back section, I'm just gonna subdivide this down the center back to give me two pieces that I can work with. I'll send that over there a little bit. And then I'm gonna subdivide here along right around the occipital. Now subdividing this before we cut the perimeter, why would we do that? A lot of times, um, and I'll do it in the salon too, if I'm having kind of a lazy day, I'll get in there, I'll drop all that length down, and I'll begin to texture cut. And when I do that, I begin to notice that I'm making really bold statements, and sometimes I would rather that be a little bit more subtle. So we're going to drop this and look for this place where we're going to separate, but we're going to do it in more of a random fashion because we want to cut for texture here. So I'm just going to zigzag my way across and set that up like so. It doesn't have to be very strict. It doesn't have to be very uniform. It can be totally random. But what we're looking for here is just something that's going to disrupt that first line as we subdivide to cut our perimeter. Notice too that the hair is starting to get just a little bit of its personality back. The moisture we had on there at first has calmed down just a little bit. So what I'm looking for here is to give her a nice trim along the bottom, but we're gonna work our way through from the inside out because point cutting sometimes can leave very chunky statements that happen for us when we want it to look a little more grown in, a little more natural, a little less, I just, I just got a haircut. So we're gonna take our first section, just gonna roll the shear over in our hand. Here's how we do this. I'm holding it like normal, and then I'm going to just place it in my hand vertically like so, or extending out with my fingers, and I'll let that ring kind of slip out to the end of the finger there. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna roll this to where those tangs come around and hug that ring finger very securely. You can see that right there. And then my thumb can reinsert. And what that allows me to do is to get into a position with my shoulder low that used to look something like this. So just working my hand in there like so and sliding in a very short span. I don't know that I'd even really call this slide cutting. It's just point cutting from the interior going out. Now, how do I set my guide for length here? What I'm doing is I'm just looking for a place to where it looks kind of even. Trends in texture right now, especially in long cuts, is that it needs to be nice and loose at the bottom. We're not there just yet where we're laser lining that stuff off. Now, I've cut the back there in that first zigzag parting, cutting for texture along the bottom. I'm going to work my way around to the first side here. And then just do the same thing. I'm gonna zigzag my way across, leaving plenty of density at the perimeter there. And then I can take this and set it up top with the rest. Same thing as we did before. We're just looking to eyeball or ish that perimeter. Looks like some of it's already there. Loose but structured at the same time. You can definitely, the question is, what magic did I just watch? It's not magic, it's just hand movements, but will it work with a swivel shear as well? Absolutely, I've got one right here. Here's me holding the swivel shear. In the swivel case, I will just kind of keep my thumb planted and then roll it around in my hand like so. And it finds its way just like the other. In this one, our Artist Series 6 slide cutting shear, uh, the thumb has to go out and then go back in. Working my way around to the other side here. Taking that zigzag parting across. Thank you all for your questions, for your participation. It really does make it easier on me knowing that somebody's out there. <laughs> You'll be comforted to know that all of your questions are being filtered and sent to me for answering by our awesome computer system, uh, Andy2000, who runs in the background constantly, making sure that we get the best content and the best questions coming through to us.
He also could appear whenever Wait, he wants. There he huh? is. Yeah, I put the I put it up on the board back here for everybody. It's uh it's Andy two thousand, our artificial intelligence network debugger year two K model. All right, just cleaning those ends right there. And we're looking for a result that is pretty much the same length all the way around, but don't beat yourself up. Allow for a little fluidity to happen, a little bit of a lived in feeling. So we've dropped our first sections down and we'll spin her back around here and bring the rest in. So as we drop this in, we're not really mushing it into the rest of the hair per se. We're gonna let it fall in there and live the way that it wants to. And what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna get down at the bottom here and look for who doesn't belong. Because that top layer didn't quite make it to the bottom here. So really all that we have left are just some little interlopers, some lingerers, if you will, that are hanging over and ready to be taken off. And notice that we just kind of fudge the hair a little bit. I've heard it called zhuzhing the hair, just to make sure that it's fitting together the way that we want to. So we're not going to leave the bottom areas just yet. We're not going to abandon this and move up top because we're going to create a layer, a guide that moves all the way around that allows us to attack what's going on under here. We'll be creating a guide that lives around that vertical transition of the so-called parietal ridge. We'll create a guide for length here that will control the layering that happens underneath here, but also it will be the guide as we interpret or blend or disconnect our way up to the top. So I'm just gonna lower her down just a little bit. No elevation just yet, Cindy. We just cut the perimeter, but here we go. So I'm gonna peel off just a tiny little bit of hair here, all the way around the head. Here I am on the first side. Let me turn her just a little bit so you guys can see. So what I'm looking for here is where can I allow this first layer to begin? There we go. Where can I allow this first layer to begin? And still leaving myself plenty of perimeter, but also leaving enough length on this that it can go up top and blend to what's happening here without getting too incredibly short. So look for that sort of longer-ish than you might think. When I first started doing this, I would feel really confident here. And I'd say, let's put one right there because it really looks good on the jaw. And then we'd get up top and, well, as you can see, we're blending to that, which was not very long. So let it be a little bit longer at first. There's a guide right there. So we'll hang on to this and put that up top for a moment. We're going to work our way all the way around. Got my mannequin really high right now so you guys can see this. Normally I would have her about chest level. <laughs> hey, Jesse. Yes, sir. Um, so we're getting quite a few questions about just like textures and fabrics of hair with this. You know, is it best for straight hair, medium hair, thick, you know, those types of things. So can you talk a bit about textures, densities, and how, how these kinds of cutting techniques might affect that? Um, also, just even from the, the perspective, even if they have wavy or textured hair, what if they do it super straight, you know, those, those kind of things. Awesome. Well, you know, in, no matter what the fabric of the hair is naturally, we always cut for the designed finish. Um, I have guests that are very straight that love to curl their hair daily, and I consider that to be their natural form and vice versa in every situation. So if this was a person per se that wanted to wear their hair curly, then I might do the cut try. If it's someone that always presses it down into a straight shape, then I might do it wet knowing that it'll be pulled down into shape. So the, the questions that we ask about texture and fabric are usually designed about end results. So, you know, what is it that you're trying to accomplish with your cut? Um, how is it gonna be worn in the final analysis? As far as now, can I do this with everybody? Uh, I would say, yeah, that you might have to push or pull the length a little bit to get where you want it. But you can definitely use these principles to construct just about any layered cut. If the person has very dense hair, it's going to get a little denser looking if we use horizontal sectioning because horizontal lines, as we know, are designed to build weight. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just walking around the head and I'm setting a guide along the vertical transition. This guide is going to be carried all the way around. 
So what I want to do is make sure that they're the same ish on both sides. So I'll take a little measurement from here. There it is. And I'll make sure that I cut this one the same length. Now I'll use this to carry my way around. You know, cutting hair horizontally is maybe not something you would do all the time, but for someone who might have very fine hair and wants to see it get a little bit bulkier looking, horizontal lines can sometimes use to build a little bit more of a substantial shape. Question is, why not a zigzag at the part of the sectioning? If you wanted to see more of a texture explosion, you absolutely could do that. Zigzagging and ra is randomizing the parting. So it's gonna give us a little bit of one section being lent to the top, and that top section a little bit being lent to the bottom as sort of the zigs and the zags go over that median section idea. So I would definitely zigzag it if I wanted this to look a little more textured, a little bit more rock and roll, if you will. Just check in my guides to make sure they're the same length. So now I've got a little veneer of hair that lives all the way around the vertical transition here and will allow me to layer the bottom and then to layer the top. Thank us for the questions, guys. Please keep them coming. I'm gonna put just a little bit of dampness back on here. A little bit of Redken One United. Sammy stole my thunder on that, but this is one of my favorite primers as well. Heat protection, and it gives a really nice slip to the hair that's never too heavy. They've definitely given us a lot of love this weekend. Thank you, Redken, uh, for so many things. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep our original sectioning plan in mind. Sectioning off at the horizontal transitions or the so-called corners. And that's done just by pressing your comb flat against those sides of the head and back of the head. We're going to start in the back. Let me whip her around here for you. Much love also to Pivot Point this weekend. I'm running some amazing specials for us on their website. 15% off all mannequins. 20% off of tripods. Now, uh, pivot point equipment, I could go on for a very long time about why I love it and why I think it's the best. But if you're serious about education and you love learning, then do yourself the favor of investing in great equipment. This tripod I'm using, um, I have had this tripod for over 10 years, still going strong. So um, when you work in the field or when you're serious about your investment having a good return, then uh, get something that you know is going to be great. I know I'm not a salesperson for Pivot Point. I just love them so much. All right, here we are. We're going to subdivide here a little bit in the back, right down the center line. So we have a section that runs from the center back over to the horizontal transition or so-called corner back. Now, as I elevate this up horizontally, I'm going to go ahead and use the fine teeth of my comb to get a good grain on this. Standing on the opposite side, just so I don't get in your way. Now we're elevating up straight vertically. I'm looking for my guide. I see it popping out right there, and I can take my cut. You know, just working that line straight across. And if I'd like to see just a little bit more texture around that top layer, then I can work my way through the interior, just like we did at the perimeter and work my way around to the front. Let me turn a little bit. How's that? Trying not to have my shoulder in the way. I'll bring myself to the ends and hold it with good tension. And then going inside the subsection, I can just take out little details, just selectively blending those ends away. And you end up just getting nice little chunks out of that that alleviate the weight. So we can drop that first section down. Because the guide runs all the way around the head, you don't really have to worry about connecting one section to the other one. You're just going to look for the shorter hair that's at the top of every single subsection that we're using here. But you wouldn't leave out the very bottom of the perimeter to make sure you don't cut into it. Oh, thanks for asking that. Here, let me turn this around to you, Kelly. It's just for you, my friend. So we just cut this section right here. We're going to take this one. So as I bring this up, You know, I take this for granted because I kind of already know I did a practice run on this cut last night. But so watch this. Here's my perimeter. Generally, it is not going to make it to the cutting position. I'm going to be way up here. This is where my perimeter length is. So that definitely is going to drop out. If you think about it, this is pretty high elevation coming off the back of the head because we're actually wrapping it up and around the occipital, bringing it straight up vertically. 
So bringing this straight up without over direction, looking for my guide. There it goes. Is that right? Yeah, there it is. And I can take my cut to give a nice clean line. And then if I want to work my way through the interior and just knock some of those pieces out. Uh, just a quick point, um, as we're texturizing, we want to make sure as much as possible. Well, I say we want to make sure. It is advisable, probably, that we would do our texturization at the time that we're cutting it, too. This will prevent us from, at the end, seeing something that we don't like and then just grabbing it and dealing with it right then and there. Uh, sometimes that could be a bad practice because if we, say in this case, layer horizontally at the end, saw something that we didn't like and just went back and started attacking it, then we might be changing the design, we might be changing the way that that silhouette's gonna look. So we're just gonna be careful to do our texturization and our blending in the same positions that we did the hair removal, the cutting part. Moving my way around to the side here. Oh, I always forget what that little knob is. All right, same thing here. We're just gonna elevate all of this straight up. Hair's getting a little dehydrated. Get a little more moisture for her. I don't want it to be so wet that water and product are running off of it, but I definitely want it to have just enough moisture to give me the control. Bringing this up now, straight up vertically, nice combing to get all that grain out. People make fun of me because I, I like to comb the hair a lot before I cut it. Don't feel bad about that, okay? I like to comb, it makes me feel confident and what I'm about to do. So if you're a, what does Hugo call it? Darth Comer, you, you be you, okay? As long as you get the results you're looking for and your guest doesn't mind. So here we go, next section. There's a little bit of the previously cut section. I can take this off horizontally and then knock a little bit of texture into those ends. Think of yourself as just a big chunking shear. You're just gonna selectively and randomly choose those places to debulk. Bringing it around to the other side. There you go. And there. Just a little bit of moisture here. So I always wonder, you know, if this is going to be a good material for you guys. And, you know, these are the questions that I have. You know, so when I teach, I I'm answering questions that I know that I have about haircutting, and then questions that maybe people have asked me along the way too. Um, I think haircutting should be simple. Haircutting uh, does not have to be super complicated. There, you know, complication just means that there's a series of steps that must follow one another in a specific order to get the result that they promise. But, you know, complicated doesn't mean that it's hard, doesn't mean that it's advanced. So um, just remember that all haircutting is pretty simple geometry. It's just about being consistent in your movements and creating the result that you had in mind before you started the cut. You know, pre-visualization of the end result will definitely help you get there because once you know what it is that you want to see, then hands and technique just fall into place to take you there. So, you know, always be thinking about what you want it to look like when you're done too. So Carol wants to know, would I dry cut this? Absolutely. In fact, the only reason I'm not is that um, I was playing around with the camera and stuff and the wet hair shows sections a little bit better than the dry hair. That's probably about the only reason. Love the dry cut hair, thanks. All right, let's turn her back here. So we pretty much did half the haircut here on the underneath section. Let me set those scissors down. Turn her a little bit for you. There is it. There we go. So before we move up top, because these are the guides that we're going to use to take ourselves up, we just want to check and make sure they're about the same length and that they build a silhouette for us in the underneath that we want to see. Because everything that's happening down here, that's done. It's not going to be different now. What happens on top is going to be blended to it. So for the top of the head, and I'm just letting you see just the top here for a moment, we're going to pay respect to um, the natural parting. A lot of times we learn haircuts that are taught to give us um, right down the middle, but I think I have like three people that wear that. So I'm gonna give a parting to her that feels pretty good. Got no mirror, so forgive me, nose to nose. There we go. Carry this off the left-hand side 
and then it's going to come around and join up with the line that moves down to center back. So when I get done, I'm going to get something that looks kind of like this. Oh, first comb drop of the day. It's okay. I'm, I got my barbicide rug in here. There she goes. So it joins up with the center line in the back and then rolls its way forward. Man, backwards. Just like that. So now we're going to pay respect to the sectioning that we were using, that foundational breakdown. Breakdowns are just maps of the head, guys. Think about it like going to work. If I know one way to get to work by a specific path, then I might know another way too. Each one takes us in a different way, but we get to an end result or our destination. So breakdowns are only that, you know, whether you break the head down into four quadrants or eight little sections or bevels or panels or whatever you would like to call it. Just remember that you're doing it because you have an end result in mind. And that breakdown is going to help you split the head into sections that allow you to logically and hopefully quickly get there. So I'm going to continue with the same idea that we talked about, which is foundational breakdown except this time we're not gonna worry about the transition vertically. We're just gonna carry those partings all the way up. So what I mean to say is, give me that horizontal transition. Could you do this from where they part versus the natural part? Absolutely, and I'm doing that right now, sir. So what I'm looking for is those horizontal transitions or so called, sometimes called corner back. So I set that right there, I get this corner. I bisect that line. This time, I'm going to carry it all the way up into the crown. So now this gives me the true side of the head and what's left here in the back. Same thing over here. One flat against the back. Here comes my hand flat against the side of the head. There's that corner. When I get that corner, I draw that line. Sammy gives a comb away every time he drops it. I don't do that. I don't have enough combs, guys. If I had to give a comb away every time I dropped it, um, it would be bad. So thanks. And by whenever I say guys, I mean guys and hot ladies. I was raised by Northerners, and that's why I talk the way I do. All right, so here we are, back section. Now, hidden inside there along the vertical transition is a guide that we created a little bit ago. We're going to look for it now as we continue to layer horizontally all the way up to the top. So just like we did before, we are going to split this down the center line, which will give us two little sections on either side of it. Pardon my back. Okay. And now what I can do is I can elevate this up. And what I'm looking for is that shortest piece from the underneath. And it should appear, there it is, right there. You can see those little guys. You can see them poking up right there. So that's gonna be where we blend our guide to. We're gonna keep the same movements that we were using, just elevating everything straight up vertically. Is everything in 90 degrees when we do that? Probably not. So we're just gonna say vertically coming off the head, just like that. From the side, it would look, if I can pop her off, about like that, just straight up. You'll see that there's a slight decrease in the elevation coming off the crown to meet that cutting line. Ooh, bringing it up straight. Bringing it up, look for the guide. Almost dropped another comb there. So when we see the guide, we can begin to blend to it. Uh, once again, we're just gonna cut through the hair. This time, I'm gonna stay in place until I get all of it. This is gonna give me a nice textured end and not like a line that sits too blunt because I'm already working with horizontal placement, which is inclined to build that weight. Um, if I go in there and just take it off blunt, then I'm probably gonna see a little bit of that weight line in there. So texturization at the point of hair removal is really gonna help me out here. Next section going up. Taking it straight up horizontal. I'm standing on the opposite side just so I can double check myself pretending to be my own mirror. There's my line that I cut before. And now we will cut to it. Extend past that line 
and then working from the interior, take the length. And just comb that into place. Back, crown, done. Moving over to the other side. Thank you guys so much for your participation and your questions. I do hope that one of you wins our giveaway today, which is going to be, uh, hey, thank you, Tara. I appreciate that. We're going to be giving away a Lydia mannequin, which we're using right here, right now, from the best uh, company out there in the biz, Pivot Point. And then we'll also be giving away uh, one of the Cosmetologists of Chicago VIP membership, uh, among other benefits that will gain you access to ABS Chicago when it happens next year, because it's going to happen. We're, we're believing. All right, so now I've got the whole side of the head here, and I'm just going to subdivide around top of the ear just to make this manageable for myself. Working with that much hair at once could be a whole lot of ha heartache. Well, maybe heartache's not the word. It's just what I came up with in that moment. Not that bad, but bad. Bringing the substrate. Once again, looking for my guide. There it is. So when I see that guide, I'll extend past it, and I can begin to cut for texture from the interior. Try not to chase your hand away. How do you cross check this? Laura Lay, stick around. I'm gonna be getting to that here in about three minutes if I'm not too slow. Bringing the next section up and looking for that guy. There it goes once again. So I'll extend past it a little bit and then to begin to cut for texture from the interior. Not really slide cutting because I'm not moving the shear through the hair. I'm just opening and closing right there. What's cool about that is how wide or how narrow you open it, that's gonna describe uh, how much density you take out. A really long bite could take a lot of hair off there. But if I just work the tip, you know, I might just get a little bit. Dropping that down. Moving around to the other side. Looking for the little spin knob, there it is. Can never find it when you're in a hurry. It's like car keys, right there. I do like the swivel head on my tripod though. Thanks to the point. I love them. I could talk about them all day. Um, they've been taking care of me since I was just a little green pup in the industry. Um, always taking my ideas seriously. Always asking me what I think. Who am I? I'm nobody. They're asking me what I think about stuff, what I think about their equipment. Hey, will you try this out for us? Um, I love them. They've always taken great care of us, especially the San Via brand too. So thank you guys to the point for all that you do. Ginger, if you're watching, you got me right here. Okay, just another subdivision to the top of the ear. And then we're going to take all of this straight up, just like we've been doing. Straight up, look for the guide. There it is. And once I see it, extend past and cut at that place for texture. Open wide, you take a lot. Open a little bit, you take a little, and then split it up, mix it up, whatever feels good. All right, one last section here, straight up. There's my guide, cut for texture. And then hey, Jesse. Of... Yeah. Hi. Did I, miss, did I miss something again? No, I, we just have we've had a lot of questions from the crowd about the contest, and just to, just wanted to jump in and kind of clarify the the contest this weekend. So basically, the way we're doing it is the same code, and you just text contest. But what time period that you text in, that's going to enter you to win within that particular segment. So as you're watching live, if you text during this segment then you're entering to win a, a contest that we're doing just for this specific segment. So um, next segment, which is actually me, <laughs> I'll be doing a different giveaway. And so you can text again so that you're entered into that contest. Hope that helps make sense. And then we're actually going to, at the end of uh, Jesse's segment, we're going to announce the winner of this particular segment. So we are going to be able to announce the winners within the segment um, so you'll know who won. Hope that helps. Oh. Thanks. We love to give stuff away. So thank you for your questions. You deserve to know. All right, so how did we cross check this? Laura Lay asked a moment ago. So we're gonna look, we cut horizontally. We know how the rule goes. We're gonna cross check 
vertically. So what are we looking for when we cross-check? We're just basically, we don't want to change anything that we did per se. That's why Sammy always says, cross-check it all day, cross-check it all you want. Just don't cross-cut it. You know, so think about what you've done. If we've taken all the time to go in and construct a shape using horizontal lines, which are designed to kind of build against themselves and give a little bit of a meatier, a little bit of a weightier appearance, then if we go in and begin to cut vertically against that shape, then we're altering that silhouette a little bit. Now, here's a way that we can get away with it. The old blending shear. Here's our Invisiblend, a very soft touch, uh, doesn't leave a mark. You'll never really even know that it was there, aside from the fact that stuff gets debulked a little bit. So we're going to go vertically. And I'm sticking with the same master plan. When we texturize, when we go in and make our repairs, don't just grab hair and go to town on it. Stick to the original plan. Find that section where you were. Isolate where the problem is and deal with it right then and there. So let's see what I did. Elevating up vertically now just to check myself, looking to see, are there any places when this just doesn't fit together? Oh, there's a longy there. Sometimes that happens. We'll get it in the cross check. We see that right there. So where did we know that that went wrong? It happened up here. So let's elevate back vertically and look at that. There were a couple of hairs that slipped through the cracks somehow. So we cross checked, we found an issue, but instead of just taking care of it like that, we went back to the original cutting design plan and fixed it according to that plan. So it's the next section. There's everything looking pretty good there. Now we can also make a decision at that time when we're cross-checking. Does it look like it's building too much weight right there? If so, we can go in and work against it, which is a choice. So using the invisible end shear, we're gonna break our own rule a little bit. And we're gonna say, I don't wanna change too much about the way this was constructed. So I'm gonna use a tool that takes a small percentage of the hair. It doesn't reinvent the shape. It's just going to vertically kind of snug that up and work against that horizontal line. Very, very small reduction right there. Same here. These are those weighty spots right there in the crown. Once again, creating a line within a line and that takes out that weight. Just working our way around, we'll cross check to where we are satisfied. So that kind of like brings us to the conclusion of the cut. It was an approach to doing layering that just might be a little bit different than what we do every day. I can't speak for everybody, but I was trained to cut my layers vertically from the very beginning. Um, We'll pop a fringe on this baby uh, on my segment tomorrow, which is in the afternoon, and it'll be about face framing and fringe. What I really want it to be is an interactive discussion where I can just answer general questions about haircutting, see how many mannequins we destroyed. But if nobody comes to the party with questions, then I'm going to talk about face framing and fringes. So I hope this worked out for you guys today. I hope you found it if uh, at least informative if not educational. Let's bring the benchmark back one more time. This is just sort of a blown out example of how that would turn out for us. No detailing in the fringe yet. That's exactly what happened, just cutting it the way that we designed the shape. Now I'm gonna move my tripod out of the way. Andrew, how'd it go, buddy? How we doing? Good, we've got some contest winners to announce. All right. Yeah, um, I'm gonna... Text messages here. Okay, so earlier, for Sam's first segment, everyone congratulate Abby Kaiser from Vermont. She's the winner of the Invisible Inch Shear and the Redkin Package. And then Jesse, for your winner. Let me Who got that sweet Lydia? Yeah, let me pull that up real quick. So he's going to win the Lydia Mannequin Head um, co co-made by us in Pivot Point and the VIP membership to Cosmetologist Chicago. And his name is Michael Bever from Illinois. So congratulations, you guys. We're really stoked and glad you're enjoying the, the show so far. And thank you for participating in the contest. And Jesse, I'll let you kind of put a little wrap on this. And then we're actually gonna, we have a little video to share at the end from um, Robert Passage from Pivot Point.
Oh, awesome. Well, that'll be worth seeing for sure. Just in closure, guys, remember that um, haircutting is a personal art. You know, the relative uh, movements and basics are easy to master. After that, you just begin to pile on your flavor, uh, your predilections, your things that you like to see about haircutting. So take away from this what you can, use it in your own world of hair. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for joining us. See you guys in a couple hours. We'll be back here uh, pretty soon with Andrew Carruthers, I do believe. Is that you, buddy? Oh, sorry, my microphone was muted. Yes, I start at, let's see, let me go to my schedule here. 1015 Pacific, 10, 11, 12, 115 <laughs> Eastern Standard Time, so. And I really yeah. wish that I could like pop into your presentation when you're in there and show you something. <laughs> All right, guys, stay tuned for, for a message from Mr. Robert Passage. Thank you so much, Jesse. We'll see you again in a little bit, buddy. Hey, guys, it's Robert Passage, Chairman and CEO for Pivot Point International. I'm coming to you live from our warehouse here in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. Uh, we're still shipping orders. I have my two sons here uh, picking and packing and uh, hoping everyone is staying uh, healthy and being safe. Um, obviously, this weekend uh, is a big event uh, that the San Via Group is putting on that we're proud to co-sponsor with, along with America's Beauty Show and uh, the Professional Beauty Association. We've sent Sam and his team a bunch of gifts that they'll be giving out throughout the course of the weekend. And of course, they'll be working with uh, our meticulously hand-planted mannequins uh, that we sustainably source and ethically manufacturing in our certified factories. So um, I hope you guys have a great time. This is probably one of the biggest classes, I'm guessing, uh, that Sam and his team have ever done. I understand there's probably somewhere around 15 or 20,000 of you this weekend um, hanging out, um, watching uh, Sam and his team uh, do some beautiful work like they always do. So we're glad to be a part of it. I took the mask off for a minute um, just to be safe and uh, look forward to uh, hanging out with you guys this weekend. So thanks again, and Sam, uh, do a great job. I know you do. Talk to you soon. Bye, my friend.